All right, guys, super exciting day today. Not only am I going to add electricity and internet to my shed, the trench that I dig between my shed and my house, I'm going to use that to start the extension of my rainwater harvesting system in three ways. Now here on the ground, I have two different sizes of conduit, one for power and the other one for ethernet. I also have a bunch of elbows and entry boxes and fittings. Now, the two inch irrigation black pipe that you see here, that'll be cut into three pieces. Two lengths will run parallel from the water tanks to my shallow well behind the shed. One of those will act as an overflow taking water away from the tanks and the other one will bring water from the shallow well to the storage tanks. Now, unfortunately, these two pieces aren't quite long enough to reach all the way to the well. But since I have this trench open for the electrical install, I might as well go ahead and drop them in and get the most of the way there now. Now this third length of irrigation pipe, this will give me the biggest bang for my buck. Now like I mentioned in my last video, the water on the upper part of the roof runs down to the lower part and then down to a downspout here. I want to collect it in a catch basin, have it flow underground and then get pumped into my tanks. Next we're going to jump into a couple of progress photos while I was digging this trench by hand. You're going to see first of all here I removed the green top. The trench has that funny little angle near the bottom of the picture and that's to allow the pipe that goes to the back of the shed to make its way gracefully around so I don't have to use any 90 degree elbows. This reduces water friction and it makes the line easier to clean if there's a blockage so I need to put a snake into the line. Also, I want to keep underground fittings to a minimum, so I don't need to worry about clamps rusting. And right here we have where those two two inch lines are going to terminate behind the shed. It's right next to where the groundwater catch basin is, which feeds into the shallow well. Working our way up the trench, this little T on the left hand side, this is where we branch off for electricity for the shed. Not sure if you noticed, but in this picture, I only have one 1250 gallon water storage tank. I'm actually going to run out and grab a couple of more. Now I bought them used from a farmer and the guy put them on his trailer and then sent me the address to come and fetch them. I carried them home one at a time and I didn't even meet the guy. I paid for them by dropping a check in this little mailbox here. And now we have the three water tanks in place. I dug the trench along the house to the AC unit and I made the trench much deeper from end to end. Here you go, here's a good shot. Here's a shot of that trench from the downspout to the AC unit. Now code for electrical is 20 inches, but obviously my irrigation won't be nearly that deep. Next, I'll run the conduit for the electricity from the house to the shed. It's a pretty straightforward process. I don't have pictures of everything here. I'm also going to drop in another section of conduit here in the same location for the ethernet cables. And here we have a very similar sump basin to the one that I'll be using to start the collection of water underneath the downspout. I think mine has a green lid on it though. I'm going to drop that into place here, connect it to the two inch line as a very temporary solution. So temporary in fact that my elbow is just barely touching the two inch pipe. I've also added a few pieces of sod into the trench here to test the height and slope of the line. Here is the location where the large sump basin is going to be installed. And as you can see, water is flowing perfectly. Super excited. And now here's a shot of the large basin that I'll be using. Let's get that installed. Awesome, the sump basin is installed with the new two inch line that feeds into it. The sump pump is inside, connected to flexible sump tubing that runs through the basin cover up into the water tank. So a very quick lesson learned here right off the bat. The pump vibrates a little bit inside of the basin when it's running and it vibrated itself into a position where the float switch was up against the side of the basin. And then of course, as the water receded, the switch couldn't turn off and the pump overheated, as you can see from the steam here. I could hear it making a funny noise in the distance for about five minutes, and then I realized what could be happening. I opened it up, pulled out the pump, and yeah, it was obviously hot. I might have to select a pump with a vertical float here instead, like this one. Let's pop open that sump basin for a final tour. So within the trench, you can see there are several lines. So these two lines right here, these are water means uh, one going from my water tanks down to my garden. Um, back there, there will be several valves for an irrigation system. 
So instead of having all of the valves up here, um, it will just save a lot of pipe to have a set of valves down there as well. So to control those valves, I need to have power. So this little line here, that's for power for the valves because the main control for the irrigation system will be inside the house. Um, the other main here is to pump water from my well from another project which you can see on my channel to pump water from there up to my uh, storage tanks. And this black line here is obviously the one that we just installed. And this thin piece of conduit right here that takes the electricity down to the shed. Actually there's one more line here I didn't talk to you guys about and that's this one here. It's the thicker line which uh, is my PoE uh, internet line and they call it PoE because there will be power running through those ethernet cables which run inside of that tube. And here we are here with one last view. I was planning on putting the pump back into the sump and then it started to rain again. But as you can see here, I'm well underway to getting the trench filled and my mini sump pump is overflowing because at the other end, the pump is not in the water yet. But I'm super happy to see that the in-ground features are working great. I can now harvest rainwater from the back half of my roof. I got electricity and internet to my shed and I have my overflow pipe in the ground along with the pipe to push water from the shallow well to the tanks. What an accomplishment, super happy. So guys, thanks for watching. Please show your support with a like and subscribe and I can't wait to show you more updates on my rainwater harvesting project. Thanks for watching.